Florence is a charming city with lots of beautiful works of art and architecture. Giberti's panels for the doors of the baptistry are among my favourites. But the most important artefact in Florence goes quite unnoticed and you won't have to stand on a long line to get into it. It's the Laurentian Library and it's by Michelangelo. Michelangelo is of course better known for his painting and sculpture but I think there's an argument that says his greatest contribution was in his architecture. The Laurentian Library was built for the Medici and houses rare manuscripts. It was built as an extension to an existing monastic cloister which sits beside the Basilica of San Lorenzo. In fact, what happened was that a floor was added above the existing structure, so that Michelangelo was already quite limited in what he could do. The principal dimensions of the floor plan were already decided for him, and this makes his achievement all the more impressive. Construction began in 1525, but the library wasn't open to the public until 1571, by which time Michelangelo had already been in Rome for quite some time. We know from surviving correspondence that several other architects supervised the works in Michelangelo's absence. Furthermore, when the library was finally opened, it wasn't in the state of completeness that we find it now. Parts of what we see today were only finished during a renovation, which took place in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This comparative image here comes from an essay by Rudolf Wittkover, who's probably the best person to consult if you want to find out more about this building. The work comprises really only two spaces, an entrance vestibule with the very unusual stairs and a long reading room. And while the reading room is very pleasant, it really is all about the vestibule and the stairs that it contains. In this space, Michelangelo makes an advance on what had gone before. In the previous century, architects in Florence had been heavily influenced by the buildings of ancient Greece and Rome. It was a classical and conservative way of building, which emphasised clarity of structure. The building must tell you how it stands up, and each element of the building must tell you exactly what it's doing. And this is where Michelangelo takes some liberties. Most famously, there is a deliberate lack of clarity about structure. Do the walls of the vestibule comprise low-bearing masonry, or is everything held up by columns? And if so, why do we need two columns when one would do? This way of playing around with the classical elements of architecture is known as mannerism, and the Laurentian Library is usually referred to as a mannerist building. However, I have a slight issue with the use of the term mannerism in this particular work. It seems to me that to explain Michelangelo's achievement here, as the result of a game being played with the elements of construction, is to do him a disservice. Because I'm of the view that Michelangelo had, in the vestibule, hit on a way of giving the building user a new type of spatial experience. Now, I'll try to explain what I mean. The first time I saw an image of the Laurentian Library, I was a bit confused because the caption said I was looking at the interior of a building, but I had the clear impression of being on the outside of something. Now, this is central to what Michelangelo is doing. Something declares itself to be one thing, but at the same time, it reminds us that the same thing has its opposite. And as a result, the user feels like they're somewhere in between the two. To take this idea a bit further, the entrance to the library is through a very small side door, which is odd because common sense would tell you a staircase like this one should be approached on an axis. Then, when you look at the stairs and plan, it looks far too big for the space that contains it. There's barely any room to get past at the foot. But when we look at the stairs in section, it seems like the reverse is true. The stairs are actually too small for the height of the room. And then we have the interior facades, which actually look like they're facing out to the exterior. The stairs feels like it belongs to the outside as well, like in a public space. So. If you're a student and you were to present this particular plan as a review, your tutor would be very likely to suggest that it should be arranged like this, with the stairs outside and leading up to a square villa. This and other manipulations, the height of the handrail is too low and gives a sense of vertigo, and these wall brackets are oversized, give the feeling that two things are always going on everywhere, all at the same time. In our minds, we're aware of the obvious thing that Michelangelo could have done when presented with the design challenge, but didn't. And then we're also confronted with the less obvious choice that he actually made. 
Now, amongst other feelings this approach evokes, I think it somehow gives a sense of the architect's presence. We're somehow in his company. And I've noticed this sensation in some of Michelangelo's other works as well. For me, the vestibule of the Laurentian Library is the very start of the Baroque mode of space making, and I happen to think it might also be its highest achievement. <laughs>